Hello and welcome back. I am Dennis Mabuka and thank you for being here. Now in a previous video I got a lot of comments asking how I did the background uh, behind the shoe in the animated texture maps tutorial. So I just thought I'd do a video on that topic. Now usually for this type of effect uh, most people use the add-on animation nodes to create uh, procedural kinds of animations. But in this video, we'll just be using the modifier stack. We won't be using animation nodes. Uh, one is because I find that this approach is just a lot simpler and just a lot more intuitive. And it it's you won't really have to deal with a lot of the math that you might sometimes have to do uh, with animation nodes. And uh, it's also beginner friendly or and it's a lot easier for people who um, aren't very conversant with nodes. But first of all, before we get into the video, I'd really like to thank all of you who have been sending me uh, some of the stuff that you've made from my videos. It's really encouraging to see and please, by all means, keep them coming. And with that, let's just get into the video. So I'll begin by uh, adding a cylinder and tweaking the settings to form a, a hexagon and then scaling it in the z-axis to make it a sort of flat. And then I'll add a bevel modifier and continue to tweak the shape some more to just have something a little bit more visually interesting. Now the next thing we're going to do is form the grid on which the wave will be traversing. And we're going to do that using uh, the array modifier. In fact, we'll be stacking three different array modifiers. And the first one will be uh, to create an array of the hexagons in the x-axis. And then we'll add another one on top of that one, which will form an array of that whole first row in the y-axis. And you'd think uh, to form your the whole grid, you would need to increase the count in the second array modifier. But if you did that, you'll notice that um, the grid goes on as it slants in the y-direction, and that's not what we want. So what I did to fix that was I set a count of two for the second array modifier and added uh, another array, a third one, which uh, will extend the first two rows in the y direction. And you'll see that creates a nice and um, even square grid. So then now we're going to create the wave effect, which is really the center, the engine that's driving this whole effect. Um, first, I'll add an empty and center this empty at around the center of uh, the grid where I want the w ripples of the wave to originate from. And then I'll select the grid and add a wave modifier and then select the starting point and set that to the empty. And you'll see now if you move around the empty, the ripples of the wave will move about along with it. And then uh, with that done, uh, the the settings really that matter here most are these four at the bottom and I've found that these values uh, work for what I want but I encourage you to play around with it and see uh, other kinds of effects you could come up with. And next we're going to do the materials and the lighting and there are just three, three materials in this scene. Uh, one is the dark uh, base material that you see and next is the the lighting on the top surface and the lighting on the bottom surface and those are pretty much just the same material but tweaked to have different colors so for the base material i'll just add a principal shader and set the color to a dark uh, almost black color and plug in a texture into the roughness and use the color ramp to tweak the gradient and that's pretty much it. For the lighting, a simple HDRI will do the trick and you can get tons of free ones over at hdrihaven.com and I'll just add uh, curves to add a bit of contrast to the lighting. Now the secret to how I got the faces to react with the light uh, without having to use animation nodes is uh, we're going to extract information from the normals. Now if you look at this example with this cube, you'll see that the faces with the normals facing in the x, y, and z directions are colored with red, green, and blue. And if you rotate 
the cube, you'll see that the colors of the faces are changing depending on uh, the direction of the normals. So we want to extract this information and create a mask that we're going to use to mask with an emission shader. To do that, we'll add a separate XYZ node and plug the normals into it. And what this does is it separates the information in the X and the Y and the Z axis into their own separate channels. And we're going to use this to really customize the look of our effect and give us a lot of control in how it looks. So now we'll select a few faces in edit mode from the top side and the bottom side of the hexagon. And as I was modeling, I made sure the top and the bottom had different patterns to sort of just have them look a bit more interesting. And then I'll assign a new material to those selected faces. And I'll do that by just duplicating the original material. Now, in this material is where we're going to create our mask. And we're going to use the X and the Y normals to create this mask. And the reason for this is that the faces with these materials have their normals facing in the Z direction. So either directly upwards or directly downwards. So in the mask, because we're only using the X and the Y, it will be completely black. And as the wave traverses through this grid, it's going to tilt these faces in either the X or the Y uh, directions to some degree. And as they're tilted, they're go the mask is going to, to turn white. And as the mask turns white, it's going to let the emission shader uh, pass through. And that's how we get this effect of um, the hexagons lighting as the wave traverses through the grid. So really, we're just using the effect that this modifier has on the model to influence the material. And I'm also using the color ramp node to just introduce some variation into the pattern. And the cool thing about this is you can tweak the different channels, the X and the, o and the Y channels separately, and then add them together later. And then also tweak that uh, result with the color ramp to give some more variation, which is, I think, is really cool. I also use the output of the same mask to create some variation in the color of the emission. And then for the bottom faces, I'll just duplicate this material and then change the colors to have it look just a bit different. And so lastly, the last thing we want to do is create this variation in the height that you see in this result, where some of the hexagons are displaced higher than others, and some are not displaced at all, just to make it, I think it, it just makes it look a bit more interesting. And there's more than one way to do this, and the first uh, way we could achieve this is... What? Okay, what's going on here? Ha <laughs> ha 